Today, I'm gonna to give you a quick tour of my brand new RV. I'm gonna tell you why I think it is hands down one of the best values right now, especially in the travel trailer space. I'll also share what my buying experience was like, so definitely stick around to the end. This is the 2024 Grand Design Imagine XLS 21 BHE, bunkhouse entertainment, I guess. And by the way, what you're seeing is exactly how it comes off the line. This was just freshly built a few weeks ago. Literally, I just picked it up from the dealer a couple days ago. And so what you're seeing is exactly how it comes. I haven't done any modifications to it whatsoever. Now the 21 BHE floor plan has been around for a number of years, but Grand Design has actually done quite a few updates and really welcomed innovative changes for the 2024 model year. So I'll try to hit all those in the tour today, but let's start by going over the numbers. Now, given the name, the 21 BHE, that 21 does indicate the overall floor length inside if you measure front to back. And then on the outside, if you factor in the ladder on the rear and measure all the way to the tip of the tongue up front here, it is right at 25 feet. When I measured, the overall height is just under 11 feet, including the AC right at 10 feet, 10 inches. And it is still eight feet across. The weights are gonna be on this sticker up front. Notice the gross vehicle weight rating. That is the max that the RV can weigh with everything inside of it. That is 6,395 pounds. Then the unloaded vehicle weight right here is 4,922. And so that is what it weighed coming out of the factory without any of your personal belongings, just as you're gonna see today. And then that gives us a cargo carrying capacity of 1,433 pounds, which is really important. You know, a lot of manufacturers will skimp on cargo carrying capacity, but that is more than sufficient, in my opinion, for an RV of this size. And then also check out the axle ratings. So this unit has two 3,000 pound axles. You know, a lot of manufacturers might skimp here and put 2,500 pound axles, but two 3,000 pound axles, that's more than sufficient. And then that leaves a tongue weight of approximately 456 pounds. I have not weighed that to confirm yet. I believe, you know, once I get all my personal belongings and things in here, I'll double check it with the propane tanks full, the battery and all that, and it'll probably go up, but I would be surprised if it went over a thousand pounds, I'm thinking it's probably gonna be in that 700 to a thousand pounds of tongue weight at the most. Now you've probably already noticed that this RV has no slides whatsoever. But when I take you inside, I think you're gonna be surprised at just how roomy it feels. You know, the majority of RVs produced today have slides, not that there's anything wrong with slides. This is my sixth RV, by the way, and only the second one that I've ever bought without slides. And again, not that there's anything wrong with slides, but if you think about it, that's one less thing to go wrong with the RV. You know, slides, there's a lot of moving parts. There's seals for waterproofing and everything. And I mean, that is one less thing that you've got to worry about with this particular floor plan. And so that was one of the reasons that I actually picked it. In fact, I picked this travel trailer specifically between the floor plan and the features because I think it is absolutely perfect for a family of, let's just say four to six. I think it's perfect for a family that wants to enjoy the great outdoors, you know, spend quality time with the family, go camping primarily on the weekends here and there, maybe take a couple week long trips over school breaks in the summer. I mean, Grand Design absolutely nailed it in this 21 BHE. They gave me every everything that I need. You know, sometimes there's things that we want and they turn out to be more problematic, you know, more time and effort involved with a setup and tear down or more maintenance involved, right? And so I think that in this Imagine XLS, there's an incredible value proposition and they got so many things right. And so that's what I'm hoping to point out to you as we do this quick tour. So let's start up front here. You've got a pretty conventional front cap. And then of course you've got your standard two and five sixteenths coupler, your power tongue jack with the light, your dual propane tanks. These are 20 pound bottles. Of course your battery box that the dealer adds in there. But check out this frame down here. This is the first time that I've seen this on a travel trailer. It's got a different finish on it. I'm not sure if this is powder coated or what, but most of the travel trailers that I've seen and the ones that I've owned previously have had you know, that paint that's glossy and it always fades and it just doesn't hold up very well. This is entirely different. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's just got a little bit of a texture to it, more of a matte finish. And as far as I can tell, this is throughout on the frame all the way around. It looks like a finish that's gonna hold up better. But then let me also point out on this breakaway cable here, it's a small detail. I don't think I've ever bought an RV that came with a coiled 
breakaway cable. I've always had to replace, you know, those cheap wires. And, you know, we all replace them with these guys. So I think it's really nice that Grand Design gives you that from the factory. Then while we're down here, I'll also point out that you get scissor jacks on all four corners for stabilization. And yes, these are manual, but they're they're simple. You know, it's one less thing to go wrong. And then let me also point out here the underbelly. If you're one of my subscribers, then you know I'm very picky about air sealing the underbelly on an RV. It's a place for air, hot air to leak out in the winter time and even cool air in the summer, but more importantly, critters and mice and things like that. It's a place for them to crawl up in. And a lot of RV brands, you know, they advertise a heated and enclosed underbelly, but then they do a horrible job of actually sealing up the penetrations, especially along the, the frame here. And Grand Design actually does a really good job of sealing it from the factory factory all the way nice and tight. Of course, they use that expanding foam for other penetrations, but I mean, this is gonna get my stamp of approval, especially for coming out of the factory like this. Then moving down the side, let's check out this first storage compartment here. And I mean, this opening is very large, especially for an entry level travel trail. I just measured it, it's 24 inches across and about 20 inches tall. And check this out, for an entry level travel trailer, look how much storage you get up front here. Also notice that they actually give you an LED strip from the factory, the full width here of the storage compartment. It is connected to some motion sensors on both sides and then there is a switch down there so that every time you're moving around, you open the door, this light comes on, just makes it a lot easier to see things in your storage. And then check out this new floor they've added for 2024. It's got that kind of nice texture there, that diamond plate pattern there to keep everything nice and neat in the storage compartment. Apartment. But I mean, just really pleased with how much space they set aside here for all your stuff. Then check out this painted aluminum skirt down here. This feels very substantial. You know, a lot of times on RVs, the skirting is very flimsy. In fact, you'll see it flapping on RVs driving down the highway, but this feels very solid. Of course, the walls are all gonna be laminated fiberglass. Then check out right here. I absolutely love this detail. You know, right now with RVs, it seems like over the last five years, almost every towable RV has switched to drawbridge style steps. You know, the steps that kind of swing in and swing down at your campsite. And don't get me wrong, those steps are great. They're very nice and stable. There's no bounce to them whatsoever. But those drawbridge style steps, every time that you swing them back into your RV for storage when you're leaving your campsite, all that dust, all that dirt, water, whatever's on them, all that ends up in your RV. For me personally, I love that Grand Design kept this conventional step well. I think these are a lot more practical at the end of the day. Up top, you've got a powered awning. I've got it deployed partially so you can get an idea of how big it is. It's about 15 feet across, but it covers everything important from your entry door going all the way to the back of the RV. Of course, you've got a coax jack, some outlets right there. And then this, in my opinion, is a must have on an RV. This is an outdoor kitchen. I mean, when I'm out camping with my family, I probably do about 80% of the cooking outside of the RV and I don't like excessive setup time at campsites. So I don't like to be pulling out tables and a griddle out of the back of my truck and you know setting up the whole campsite. So the fact that this is all built into the RV, you just pull it out, you know it's attached, you pull it out of the drawer slide and it's right there ready to use. It's the perfect size I think for a family of four to six and Grand Design actually did this right. It pulls out far enough away from the RV. They've got a little splatter guard in the back there and so that way you don't have to worry about heat, you know, getting too close to the RV. So I think they, they nailed that there. And then up above, of course, you've got a nice shelf where you can store other items. And then over here, you've got a nice refrigerator. This is 120 volts. And again, all this is covered by the awning. So I really like this outdoor kitchen setup. And then over here, you do have a spray port for water. I'll show you the cold hose when we get up to the front that plugs into here. You can actually also convert this to a proper faucet. If you haven't seen my mod on this, I'll put a card up for that video, but basically any of these quick connect fittings, you can convert to a proper faucet. Then out back, we've got a laminated fiberglass rear wall. And I just wanna point out that all the lights, the running lights up top there, the tail lights, everything's LED, of course. You do have a shark fin right there that's pre-wired for the Furion backup camera. Nice ladder to get up to the top. And then check this out right here. This is a tankless, water heater now these used to be more of an option on some of the higher end you know fifth wheels and rvs and such but they're becoming more and more commonplace to the point that we're seeing them now on an entry-level travel trail like this one here so that's pretty nice 
Then down here, we've got a two inch receiver. You can put a bike rack there or a storage rack to bring extra gear along. And then we've got our 30 amp shore power connection right here off the back. Up top, we got 180 watt solar panel, TV antenna, attic vents, of course the AC, two 14 inch vents with the mini fan. We've got gray tank, black tank, and the shower skylight. Then coming down the driver's side, again, no slides. You've got just a really nice clean wall all the way down. Left one of the jacks down so you can see what they look like. And then we've got our sewer connection right here and you've got your gray tank and your black tank. There's a 45 gallon gray tank and then a 37 gallon black tank and then another 37 gallon fresh tank. You can see your low point drains are right next to it there. Then just above, we've got a black tank flush to clean out the black tank. We've got our furnace exhaust here and notice we've got a nice service panel for it so that if anything goes wrong, you don't have to rip everything out inside, but rather you can get to it from the outside here. But let's take a look at our running gear here. Notice that the axles are spread apart. You've got a real basic equalizer, but notice that the hangers are actually a pretty good thickness, pretty decent size for a travel trailer of this size. But then check out these tires. We've got the Goodyear Endurance tires. These are the ST20575R14. We've got nice USA tires from the factory. And then notice that inside there's that red on the hub. These actually come with the new anti-lock brake system from Lippert. So I think their running gear is really solid. You know, that's an area that a lot of brands will cheap out on because let's just face it, we don't pay attention to that as much up front. But I think Grand Design made some really solid choices there. Then underneath, I'll just point out that you do have a full size spare tire there that's held up with a cable that you're going to crank up and down. So that's really nice. You probably noticed out back that there's no bumper anymore. And so instead of the spare tire being out back, it's nice and protected underneath here. And then because there's no bumper, they gave you this nice sewer storage that's tucked up here toward the front of the unit. So that's really nice. And then last thing to point out here on the outside is just notice how clean this wall is right here. And that's because the water connection and all the valves and everything are on the inside of your pass-through storage. I mean, this is almost like a little mini wet bay. And again, this is an entry-level travel trailer. So it's really nice that Grand Design did this. You've got a little door down here to run your hose. And then you've got a real basic city water connection, a single valve between city water and to fill your tank. You can also fill the tank through this gravity fill over here. But I mean, just a really nice, neat little mini wet bay. You've got a battery disconnect, a disconnect for your solar, your coax, and then a GFI outlet here. Of course, you've got your quick connect right here for that coiled hose that I was mentioning for the water. And then I almost forgot to mention, you do have a switch right here that puts a little light on your waste area out back. So I'm really impressed with this little mini wet bay that they give you. They even have a little drip tray down here in case any water drips. Of course, you do have that LED strip running the full width. It is pre-wired with that tire link system if you want to add the TPMS sensors. And then this switch right here just disables the motion on that strip. You've got your solar charge controller up above. So really nice pass-through storage, and I really like that mini wet bay design. And I almost forgot, I promised I would talk about my buying experience with this RV. So I just want to give a huge shout out to Cookville RV and Marine. They're in Cookville, Tennessee. And just a huge special thanks to Jackson and the rest of the staff there. Definitely reach out to them. They do a lot with Grand Design. And I mean, they are straightforward, honest people. There's no bait and switch gimmicks or any hidden fees or things like that that they throw in at the last minute. So definitely reach out to Cookville RV. Reach out to Jackson and tell them I sent you. But let's head on into the inside. You know, this is one of my, I think, all-time favorite floor plans in the RV industry. There's a lot of different variations of it, but I think Grand Design just got so many things right. When you walk in, just check out how spacious it is. Remember, again, no slides. I'll do a real slow pan from the back, and then we'll start up here in the front. Right now I've got it set up in the sleeping mode. And so this is a, it's almost a queen size bed. It's 59 inches across instead of 60 and then 76 inches long instead of 80. So it's almost a queen size bed and it comfortably can sleep, you know, two adults. You've got some fairly deep storage cubbies on both sides of the bed there with USB outlets and 120 volt AC outlets, real nice and deep. And then there's a kind of a decorative padded headboard above. You've got reading lights up there that can be in that blue ambient mode or you can turn them white. 
and then you've got a little shelf up above and just kind of a nice decorative little valance up there with some some backlighting and then one thing that really surprised me about this particular floor plan is the storage i mean they maximized every inch of storage so check out with the bed here you've got drawers on either side you've got a little wardrobe cabinet up above and it's the same story on the other side and then you've even got a little cabinet down below again with ac outlets it does have a single smart tv which i think is really all you need when you're out camping it is on an arm that pulls out and swivels about 180 degrees so it's perfect if you want to watch it while you're in the you know bed mode here i'll flip this up into a couch here in just a minute but you can also see it from the the that area and probably from the the bunks over there but going back to the bed area notice how grand design actually gives you this curtain here for privacy so when you deploy this all the way over to the side you've basically got an entirely separate and private bedroom area it is not see-through so that's a really nice feature but then consider this if you're going to partition off this sleeping area and it's the middle of summer it's gonna get pretty warm up here in the sleeping area, but notice how there's ducted AC and there is a, an AC vent right here to keep everything nice and cool. Not only that, but notice there's a smoke detector here in the sleeping area. There's actually a second smoke detector over here in the main living space. I think this is the first RV that I've ever seen, definitely that I've ever owned, that came from the factory with two smoke detectors. Maybe that's a new Rivia code, I'm not sure. You're probably also noticing these new strip lights that are gonna be probably coming to a lot of RVs now. And it just really makes the RV a lot brighter. The temperature on these strips is ever so slightly on the cooler side and it just kind of makes everything feel a little more like daylight and just a little bit brighter here inside the rv now let me show you next what it looks like to convert the sleeping area the murphy bed into the day mode with the the couch and i'll just confess that murphy beds have never been real appealing to me in the rv space but when you're trying to keep things short overall on your length in the RV and compact, you really almost have to incorporate a Murphy bed. And so I've come around to, to liking them a bit more. And this one, actually, the couch is you know, contoured. It's actually quite comfortable. And again, check out the storage. I mean, they crammed in drawers and cabinets into just about every inch they could find there. It's just really incredibly functional. Well, let's check out the kitchen next. Start with, you've got a real nice wide stainless steel single bowl sink. It's fairly deep. And you've got a real nice drying rack here. Nice pull down faucet with the sprayer on it. I love how they've got this window directly above the sink there. Of course, it's got a pull down roller shade. And then check this out right here. We've got a wireless charger for your phone. This is something new for 2024. And we've got a nice pattern here on the countertop. This isn't solid surface, this is wrap, but I mean, that's what you'd expect in this price point. I still think it looks really nice. They even got a little detail here where it kind of comes out around the sink. Real nice little spice rack here, or you could put other different supplies and just a lot of storage all the way around in the kitchen. You've got, of course, a three burner gas stove there from Furion. And one thing I really like about this is when you turn on the gas it's going to show red so that you don't accidentally leave one on so it's a real nice visual indicator of course you've got a smaller oven right here if you wish to use it and some more storage down below and then while we're down here let me just point out that this is your converter your breaker box and this is nice because it's an auto detect model so that if you change from the lead acid batteries you know that most dealers give you and you change over to lithium you don't have to worry about changing out the charger to work with lithium batteries so it's really nice that they're doing that now but uh, you've got just some real nice clean labeled breakers down below and then of course all your your fuses up top labeled and the lights will illuminate if one of them is blown and by the way the water pump is right below the stove and oven back behind this drawer so it's real easy when it comes time to winterize you just pull the drawer out and everything's right there easy to get to up above the sink we've got some real nice storage up here with these smoked glass doors and this is something new for 2024 notice you've got storage all the way across it used to be only half of the cabinet was open and the other half was blocked off 
for a stereo. You'll notice that there's no more stereo. In fact, up above on the ceiling, there are no speakers. So they did away with that. And I actually understand completely why, because personally for me, the stereos that they put in RVs, most of them anyway, are not that <laughs> desirable and they don't sound so great and they're not always the, the best quality. And so most of the time I don't end up using them. And so they figure, hey, most of our, our owners are probably gonna just have a Bluetooth speaker, a portable Bluetooth speaker, like one of those JBL flips or one of those Bose speakers, right? And so for me, I actually think that's perfect. I would prefer that extra storage up there. Then we've got, of course, a microwave right here, decent sized, and some storage up above. And then, of course, we've got a, a vent hood there above the range. Then we've got this really nice 12 volt refrigerator. This is a really good size. I'll show you what it looks like inside. You've got plenty of space right here for a family of four to six you know, for even a, a week long trip. And then you've got the same thing up above, a real nice spacious freezer. And again, this is all 12 volt. They've done away with the propane. I think every RV brand should. So this is gonna be a lot more efficient and it's gonna function more like a residential, you know, refrigerator with a conventional compressor. Then next to the refrigerator, we've actually got a really decent sized pantry that pretty much runs all the way from the floor up to the ceiling it's pretty deep about 22 inches and about eight inches across here on the opening so again more than enough space to put everything that you would need for a, a week-long camping trip and i let this out to remind me because the the cabinetry here the core of all the doors in the cabinetry is actually real wood you can pause it if you want to read more about it but a lot of times in travel trailers especially in this price point everything is mdf and then it's wrapped with a, a film and actually here it's real wood on the core now it's still wrapped with some kind of film of the near but what's really neat about the the cabinet doors i've noticed is it's got almost like an embossed pattern like a wood grain that looks like and resembles what real wood would be finished. And so it's a really, I think, economical option that they selected for all the, the cabinetry. And it's just got a really nice appearance overall. Then directly below the refrigerator here is the furnace. It's a 25,000 BTU propane furnace. And there's a detail here that I really like a lot. In most smaller travel trailers, it seems like, especially in this price point, most brands are going to put kind of an all-in-one standalone furnace where it's just you know one compact unit right here where it sucks the air in and spits the hot air out but it's all coming from one source and then you know that air has to travel throughout the the rv to keep everyone warm and basically what happens is it gets extra warm naturally where the furnace is well grand design has actually put a ducted furnace so you've got ducts throughout the travel trailer you've got another one in the bathroom behind the toilet under the shower there and then going around to this side, you've got another one just behind this, this curtain here. And so what I like about that is if you're gonna be using this in cold weather camping, then it's actually distributing that heat and trying to push it throughout the RV as opposed to just a single source. So that's a really nice detail when you think about it. And then for cooling, it's got a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. This one's from Furion. Like I said before, it is ducted, which is a little bit of an unusual detail for a travel trailer of this size, you know, that's so open. A lot of brands will just put a standalone air conditioner that forgoes the ducts and basically just blows the cool air, you know, out of each side there. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that in terms of efficiency. You could argue that it's going to, you know, more efficiently cool the space because it doesn't have ducts to compete with. But if you think about even how small this travel trailer is, if you think about how you kind of section off, and I'll show you like with the bunks here in just a minute, with the curtains, and then like you saw before in the front with the sleeping area, if you were to section all those areas off, then if you think about it, the airflow is not going to be that great, and it's probably not going to cool very well going through the, the curtains. So the fact that Grand Design did a ducted system here, I do think it makes a lot of sense in the end because that way if you do section everything off, especially at nighttime, there's still gonna be cooling, you know, reaching all of the, the sleeping areas. And then the heating and cooling is all gonna be controlled by this thermostat right here on the wall. But let's take a look at the, the dinette area. I really like how they put the dinette area on the camping side right here. So as you're looking out, you've got your campsite here as opposed to, to flipping it and putting the kitchen on this side and, and blocking all of that. So I think it's a really nice detail, but this is a really nice, comfortable size. You can easily fit, you know, four people at this dinette, two on each side. Maybe even if you've got smaller kids, maybe three kids across here 
but it's just a really nice comfortable size of course the table does go down it's got a single standing leg in the middle and you can turn this into another bed for a smaller kid of course and use the the cushions there so it's a really thoughtful detail get a nice big window there with the pull down roller shade and then check this out you've got more storage up here and it's got some hinges there to support as you lift up so you don't have to hold it and it's got a really nice accent running along the, the cabinet doors there. Then all of your controls are gonna be right up here, right next to the door when you walk in. Of course, since this is such a simple RV, it's really basic. Of course, you've got your tank monitors there, your battery monitor. You've got your ceiling lights in here that turn all the ceiling lights on and off, exterior light on the awning, and then your water pump and then awning retract and extend this is the compass connect and so it does have that bluetooth connectivity which is which is kind of nice because you do have some features here that you can control on your phone through bluetooth so that's kind of nice that they've added that in and then last there also is a dimmer switch for all the strip lighting the ceiling lights there so that's kind of a nice detail as well. All right, well, let's take a look at this bunk area back here. And let me point out some details that they absolutely nailed. The first one is think about how are your kids gonna get up to that upper bunker? Because this is an area that a lot of brands overlook or let alone how are you as an adult going to get up to that upper bunk? And notice how they thoughtfully place this ledge at the top of the dinette here. And this is the perfect you know, size. It's like a little step, something really solid that kids can use to climb up in here. Second, it's all open here. You know, there's some brands that have a floor plan where it kind of cuts off with a refrigerator or something. You've got this really narrow opening to get back, but this is all open. So it's real easy to get into. I mean, I could get in here if I needed to. These beds are not quite double. They're uh, 47 by 76. So larger than a twin, but not quite a double. I mean, unless your kids are really, really young, you know, you're really gonna be sleeping one, one kid per, per bunk. But I mean, it's got nice windows on both sides. That back one is an emergency exit. Then of course, they've got lights that you can turn on individually. Of course, it's got that, that vent up there, that duct. And then you do have some USB charging both on the top and the bottom bunk. And again, you've got a nice window here on the bottom and a light that you can turn on and off. So I think they absolutely nailed the bunk area. And then of course you've got the curtains. I'll show you what that looks like to open and close. Really just makes it easy if your kids are going to bed at different times and you wanna block some of the light there and have some privacy. It's really nice that they've got that top and bottom. Then directly below the bunks is a fairly large storage area. It goes all the way back to the rear of the RV. It's got a nice light there. Of course, a carbon monoxide propane detector. And I would say it's probably about two feet across by two feet tall. So really large storage area. There's no door on the back there leading to the outside, but I'm perfectly fine with that, the way that we're gonna be using it. Then there is some motion lighting down here, which is kind of nice. So if your kids get up in the middle of the night, they've got a little light to guide them to the bathroom, which we'll check out here in just a minute. There's also another motion light right here when you walk in, in the, the front. So really thoughtful detail. And then I almost forgot to point out something else right here. Notice that they've got a designated shoe storage for your shoes. And this is something that a lot of RV brands overlook. When you walk in, there needs to be somewhere convenient to place your shoes. And I think this is one of the largest shoe storage areas I've ever seen before. I mean, you could put boots in here, nice tall boots. So there's plenty of room for your shoes right there. And it goes all the way under the dinette. Well, last, let's check out the bathroom. And I think you'll be surprised at how spacious it is. In fact, I would say it's about the same size as any bathroom in an RV. You've got a nice toilet right here that is porcelain, not plastic. I don't know anybody that wants a plastic toilet in their RV, so that's nice. And then check out the storage. You've got all these little cubbies going up the side of the shower there. They go all the way back real deep. You've got a real nice shower right here. Plenty of room for someone big and tall like myself to get in. I'm six foot two and five eighths inches tall, by the way. And then check out this shower door. It's retractable, so it looks real clean and it's not see-through. So you could have someone in the shower and someone else working in the bathroom at the same time. But just a really functional, decent sized shower, especially for the size of, of this RV. And I love how they've given you this window in the bathroom. I mean, this is something that a lot of brands would skip, but it just opens things up and gives you a real nice view out the bathroom. Of course, there is a pull down roller shade. Then up top, you've got a standard 14 inch vent with one of those little itty bitty fans. 
So I'll probably be replacing that, but it is powered and there is a switch on the wall tied to it at least. And then check out all this countertop space over here. I mean, this is really decent how they ran it along this wall. You got all that storage down below here. And then you've got a stainless bowl sink. I mean, a lot of brands in this price point, you're gonna find plastic right here. So I really like that they did that and a really decent fixture. So really a lot of counter space. And then of course you've got storage underneath the sink there. And then you gotta have a vanity cabinet, a medicine cabinet up above. So I like the way that they've worked that into the corner. Of course, mirror on the door. You've got some hooks on the wall and even a towel bar already set on the door there. So I mean, really considering the size of this travel trailer, I think they absolutely nailed all the details here in the bathroom. So as you can see, it's a really functional floor plan. And I mean, I think Grand Design got so many of the details right. It just adds to the value of owning one of these smaller units. Now, like I said today earlier, everything you've seen is directly from the factory, how the unit comes off of the line. If you're not one of my subscribers, then you probably don't know this, but I enjoy doing mods and upgrades to RVs and kind of fine tuning some of the little details and taking things even a step further. And so in the months ahead, I plan to do a lot more videos featuring this unit and showing some of the different mods and upgrades that I plan to do. So definitely make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of that in the future. If you got any questions about this particular floor plan, definitely drop me a comment below. As always, thanks for watching.